So guys, here we go. Now Mr. Keith is setting up the machine. I'm creating uh, a job called Highest Go. Okay. 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 So this is all to uh, create the uh, the header for the report which will come at the end. Oh, so we've created Highest Go. Okay. okay. And I push enter. Now we have on the operating screen Highest Go. We have the, the probe that we want to use, okay. but it's given us a warning saying we don't have the right uh, setup. Okay. So we have the right. So we go into the menu of okay. the instrument here. Okay. Open a setup. Okay. We open the the master list. Okay. Sorry, my finger is. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then we scroll down until we find. Sharp 28 millimeter, which is what this oh, probe okay. is. Okay. You highlight that, push OK. Why do you select sharp 28 mm? Because this is this is the uh, the name of the probe. This is okay. the one we're using. This, this machine will work with many it, many different probes. Okay. Is it uh, having any relation with the uh, size of the vessel, the thickness? Well, I mean? uh, the better the better. Uh, this is a baby one. This is the smallest one. Okay. We do one that is 53 millimeters wide okay. and another one that is 104. Oh, okay. This is only for demonstration uh, purposes. It's small, but okay. it will show you the principle of, of how okay. it works. Okay. 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 So now the warning is gone. Okay. We're using this probe, which the instrument has identified itself. Okay. Fine. Um, we've got the setup, and we're now ready to go. So we push start working. Okay. And we can now change all of the report parameters. The last okay. time I used this was in Abu Dhabi. We okay. can change that to Kuwait. It's very okay. easy to do. Okay. Just delete that and go. And then change, uh, change uh, to client to ESCO. Yeah, client we can change. Okay, okay. I'm the inspector. The, the rest of it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. So guys, you yeah, see all the information is written, and this is uh, this information helps to provide the report with yeah. all the information. Okay, yeah. so we now have, uh, now for the first time we see the eddy current operating window. Okay. We have three, three C scans. Okay. The first one will show the raw data coming from the pro, and okay. we should be able to see the profile of the weld cap. Okay. The second two windows, this if there's anything with depth, like okay. a crack, will appear okay. here. And the, the last one at the bottom, will show the length of the crack in uh, real time. This is. Oh, okay. So, just to show you how it works, I've got a sample so here. the first one you said? Uh, we'll show uh, that we've actually scanned the world cap and okay. no one has made a mistake and uh, okay. missed the cap. So you'll, okay. you'll see the evidence of it uh, on that window. So all the, the middle one, on the capping. Yeah, okay. this is DP raw, R is raw data, unfiltered. Okay. Okay. These two channels are filtered Okay. This will show you the data for the depth of the crack, okay. and this will show you the length, length of the of crack. The crack. Okay. And the length will appear here, okay. in the, this box, okay. and the, the depth will appear magically over here. Oh, okay. Fine. okay. We then have, just here, okay. a drop-down... Sorry. We have a drop-down menu where oh, when we okay. find a defect, oh, we can man. define it as cap, toe, as, transverse, no defect detected, or a geometrical effect. Okay, so we can characterize each defect. Okay? So, first thing we need to do is to calibrate. Yeah. And I, so I've been in eddy current many, many years, and I've okay. never found a machine that's as quick and easy to calibrate okay. as this one. Okay? So the first thing we do is we... Uh, balance the probe and in less okay. than a second uh, okay. we've, we've balanced the probe. Okay. Many many uh, eddy current instruments on the market take five or six seconds okay. to do that. This okay. is less than a second. We then go to the calibration okay. section. You see it's a window. So you selected the calibration. Right? Calibration, yeah. Okay. And then there's one called assisted shark. Ah, assisted shark is shark. the name of the probe. Okay, fine. So the first one we put on this black plastic Okay, okay. and it's done already. 
We then put it on aluminium. Aluminium, okay. And then we put it on the material that we're going to test, Carbon which is sheet. my sample. Okay. And then, once you've collected those three pieces of data, you push calibrate. Okay. And the job's done. We're ready to go. Oh, okay. So you close that down. Fine. Go back to home. Now we can scan. So oh, this, okay. this plate was okay. made in America by a company called uh, Flortech. Okay. And it has three defects, two toe cracks and one has crack. Okay, I have the drawing for it. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll just scan it and show you what Fine. a crack looks like. Okay. Sorry, I should show you. When I put the probe onto the weld cap, you can see that the, uh, yeah, they have been the yeah. teeth... It's taking the shape of the cap. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah. So in a single scan, oh. I will test the has the toe, the cap, the toe, and the has the other side. Okay. Good. I hit acquire. Ah, there is okay. Okay. So um, a defect has to have this yellow red spot. Okay. Okay. An opposite. Down here, we should have red followed by blue. Blue. Red followed by blue. Red followed okay. by blue. Now, up here, this is the weld cap. Okay. If we go further up, this is the house. Ah, okay. Same as with AUT. Uh, the green color means there's no defect, there's nothing happening. Mm. Okay. There's the weld cap. And if we down the bottom here, it's a narrow probe, but you can see the, the has. Uh, forming on the opposite side. This is the raw data from the probe okay. and it means you can send a guy on site, he can scan, okay. do no analysis, go back to the office okay. and then the level 3, the level 2 oh. can look at the data and as long as he can see the weld cap he knows that the guy has scanned the right area. Okay. If there's no weld cap there, so then the data is no is good. Done, uh, you can save the data and the data can be yep. on. Now, I'm the analysis, so I can see this here. So I just touch the screen, okay. and... Um, you are now measuring the size of the yeah, defect, right? Yeah, I just need to make the cursor a little bit bigger. So I put the cursor in the middle of the... Uh, right, okay. now... I can tell you that this defect is actually 19 millimeters long. The probe, the probe should be allowed to warm up for 15 minutes. Now, guys, you see the defect is around 17.6 mm length, as highlighted. Yeah. And regarding the depth, the depth is here. The depth is around 3.2 mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, uh, for me, the C scan, uh, the imaging is what you work with but if you have a level two level three eddy current guy he'll want to see the typical um signal from a crack and here you have the figure of eight shape which is very typical of a, a differential probe that's here and this is the depth data of the defect look what happens if i come away from the defect with the cursor we lose the figure of eight there's no depth data we're sitting in a green area where there's no defect. So um, there, there's not, nothing to say there's a crack. There's no red and blue spot. So um, it's very easy to interpret the old uh, eddy current impedance plane and say there's no defect. As soon as we go back onto the defect, oops, let me just centralize it. In the red, we're now back to uh, that's how long the crack is, crack is, and that's how deep it is. Okay? Yeah. Now, the other thing I like about this... If I can show you... Is where... It's not so clear on this one. Uh, let me just go somewhere else. Let's go to this one. Okay. This one on the calibrated drawing is six millimeters long and we've yeah. got 6.8. 6 and yeah. on the calibrated drawing it's 1.0 deep yeah. and we're absolutely perfect at 1.0. Yeah. 
Okay. So this is the defect which we have already created in that calibration block. Yeah. And it's uh, yeah. corresponding. And it's actually sitting uh, next door to the, there's the cap. So it's actually in the heat affected zone. It's in the heat affected zone, yeah. Okay. okay. That's where the closer is, the center of the closer you can see. Okay, if we come okay. to this next one here, this is 13 millimeters long yeah. and 2.5 deep, and we've got 2.8. So yeah, within 10% error, it's fine. But in fact, okay. it's not centralized. If you look, we should center. Maybe it will be 2.5 then. But it's 2.6 now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the same 2.6 and the calibrated depth is 2.5. Okay. Now if you look, this this one we said was 6 millimeters. Okay. This is 13. So you can see that the distance between the red and the blue is an uh, indication of length. That is narrower, closer together than this one. Yeah? So the operator can very quickly, even visually, say, if that's six millimeters, this must be about 12 or 13, without even looking at that. Okay? Now, this is a toe crack, and you can see the cursor is sitting on the toe of the world cap. Okay. So I think so. 